Should tell you our first segment brought to you as always by the Harmony Foundation, Colorado's premier treatment program for drug and alcohol addiction. Mm. And right. uh, you want I, to get into the nuggets. Last night, they rest Gallo, Fareed, and Ty Lawson. Guys who together provide like 45% of everything, offense, rebounding. I mean, ridiculous. They decide last night in they, Memphis they to specific. rest these guys. Be specific. Well, here's the question. Who decided that? Because Melvin Hunt didn't did. sound like it was his decision. The players didn't ask Melvin Hunt. You could see that in Wilson Chandler's tweets. He wasn't happy, and Fareed wouldn't even comment about it. So who's who's pulling the strings here? Is it Josh Crockett and Tim Connolly, or is it the man behind the curtain, Woodrow? Is it the big guy? Is it Stan Kroenke? What's going on here? I don't think Stan Kroenke would have made a decision here. What he's told me in the past, and this say this without quoting verbatim, is that Josh and the general manager... Tim Conley. Yeah, I know that. I was getting to that. I, I was giving him a title. General manager, Tim Conley. <laughs> and, and I was going to say, and Messiah <laughs> Ujiri, and Messiah Ujiri before him, he was talking about general managers, that he doesn't make... Um, he doesn't make the calls that are would be like this. He he is involved with major decision, and a major decision is not seating guys. So this was made by Josh Kroenke and Tim Conley. They had sat down and talked, and they probably let Stan Kroenke know. Although he's got a lot of things on his plate right now, so I don't know that he's worried about the Nuggets and where they're going and what their slot's going to be in the lottery. This was a decision made by them. Melvin Hunt would never make this decision because he would like to finish the season by winning 20 out of 25 sure. or something like that. They got a, a probably 16, 18 games left. They got a five game road trip. He might have been able to steal one last night or steal a couple on this road trip because other teams are relaxing and playing some of their uh, bench warmers. So I think that this was finally, finally, you know, we had Tim Conley here that day and I said, why don't you tank? It's my idea for you to tank the rest of the season. I've been trying to get them to tank since before the All-Star game. Now they're going to do it. Guess what? It's too late. It's too late. Yeah, they, they sit in the eighth. They have the eighth worst record right now. So they have the eighth best odds and for what, a high draft what pick. Is less, and you and I talked about this two weeks ago when they, before they fired Brian Shaw, what were they in a position to get to? Yeah, fourth, probably fifth, more likely. Fourth or fifth? Yeah. Well, you got, oh, you got my Diet Coke for me. Oh, no, Dr. Pepper? They're all out, I'm sorry. Oh, of course, because I get one every day, and they don't ever replace the Diet Dr. Peppers. I got to get on their butts now. I got to look, I got to stand at the vending machine until the guy comes and say, put peanuts back in there, put Diet Dr. Pepper in there. What is it with vending? If you want to change in life, don't put money in a vending machine. <laughs> If you want change in your life, do not put money in a vending machine. How's that for a bubble blast for today? <laughs> they, they waited too late. They could have gotten to fifth reasonably. They could have gotten to fourth. But a couple things happened. They fired Brian Shaw, put Melvin Hunt in, just trying to, and Sacramento hired George Carl. So that kind of led to what's going on. But there were all, all sorts of rumors going around yesterday that weren't true about... Uh, well, that Melvin Hunt was going to do something in honor of... Oh, he that was he wasn't wearing a tie it. while coaching yeah. to protest the fact that management told him not to play Ty Lawson. It, it was a joke. It, it was, yeah, it was a joke. He was joking I, around, but ma management did tell him not to play those he, guys. I believe Stan Kroenke's fingerprints are all over everything that's going on there over now, uh, right now. I believe <laughs> that he had a big say in the firing of Brian Shaw. Sure. I believe That's a big that decision. I believe, guys for and, and, and I don't have any nothing. proof, but I believe that he has told Josh, his son, and Tim Conley, I want a high draft pick. Stop winning games. Pull the plug. I don't like what's been going on here. I didn't like what happened under Brian Shaw. I don't like the empty seats. I don't like the fact that our concession sales are down. I think. Oh come on. I think we need to lose more. And I'm going to be responsible for hiring the next coach. And I believe that that um, Stan Kroenke and his coach whisperer, Brett Barrup, who he's very good friends with and who used to be one of the guys who ran this franchise, 
I believe that they want Mike D'Antoni to be the head coach here and that Melvin Hunt does not have a shot. Interesting. Yeah. Hey, first segment was brought to you by Harmon, by the Harmony Foundation, Colorado's premier treatment program for drug and alcohol addiction. It's located just outside of Estes Park on a beautiful private 45-acre mountain campus. They are insurance friendly, so uh, if you might need some help or you know somebody who does, somebody near and dear to you, check them out on the web at HarmonyFoundationInc.com.